Hello and welcome to a van update. This is part three of the new shelf slash cupboard building and I did leave you on something of a cliffhanger at the end of part two so if you haven't seen that I've left a link to it in the video description below. I would advise going and watching that first. When I say cliffhanger I mean it's as much of a cliffhanger as these things are ever left on the van build videos in as much as I needed to find some hinges. And thank you very much indeed to anyone who left a suggestion for hinges that I might be able to use. I don't think I explained myself all that well because many, many of these suggestions weren't really getting the idea of what I was looking for at all. But a handful of people got it and I think about two people actually suggested the perfect hinge but unfortunately it was, if I recall correctly, only available in America and also because I'd never anticipated needing to use that kind of hinge when I originally built the shelf unit, there wouldn't have been enough space, enough actual wood for me to use those hinges on the very far left cupboard unit. So in fact it all wouldn't have worked anyway. However, a couple of other people said why not make your own hinges out of some doweling rod, some wooden dowel, and that is the route I have gone down. So without further ado, there's lots of detail to get into, but without further ado, why don't I show you the finished shelf unit. And here it is. All wood stained and varnished to match the rest of the camper van woodwork. Three cupboards with, as you can see, wooden dowel hinges on the outside which some may not like but I'm okay with. And there is a good reason for why the hinges had to be on the outside and not the inside. What I discovered and it really hadn't occurred to me and I don't see why it should have really if you put the hinges on the inside then the front top corner of the shelf of the of the cupboard door as you start to open it, it's not quite at the apex of its travel. So as you open the cupboard, it will rise up very fractionally before it then starts to descend. And because of that, that top corner of each cupboard was trying to rise into the ceiling of the van. And there wasn't really enough space for it to do that. And it would rub against the ceiling of the van. And over time, that would have worn the paint away quite apart from just being a nuisance in terms of drag to open the cupboard. So in order for the pivot point to be right so that the top of the cupboard doesn't drag against the roof, the hinges had to be flush with that corner. I'm not sure this is making any sense, but the hinges needed to be on the outside for the top of the cupboard not to rub against the ceiling as I opened it. And that is just down to the way that I'd originally cut out the cupboard doors. I am quite pleased with them. It's three separate little cupboards where I can store my cornflakes or my toothbrush or whatever and they've got little dividers between them so they are separate cupboards. There's a tiny little wooden um, rail at the back to stop things falling over and dropping out the back of the cupboard because of course the side of the van is not perfectly even and I just put the bottom plank of wood that makes the base of the shelves up against it so there was a little gap so I put a little rail at the back to stop anything falling out there and there are a couple of other little features I should probably show you as well. First of all there is my ingenious if I say so myself mechanism for stopping the cupboards coming open while I'm traveling. I've made these dowels the same as the hinges and then I just turn that and that holds them shut. Now I know you're thinking why didn't I just put really strong magnets inside the cupboards? I didn't want extremely strong magnets. The trouble with magnets is I would probably have had to yank the cupboard doors open whenever I wanted to open them if the magnets were going to be strong enough to hold them shut while driving and I didn't want to be yanking my cupboard doors open I just wanted them to open smoothly so I thought let's just have a fastening mechanism for when I need to travel and that's why I've done these dowels across the front. The other thing to point out is that this entire cupboard shelf is removable. It's held in place by this bolt and another one at the other end so that the whole cupboard unit can be lifted out. And it needed to be removable because it sits on the corner shelf unit at the end 
which itself has always been removable so that if you need to you can get to the gas pipe work and the back of the propane heater and the exhaust and the air in it and all that kind of stuff and also incidentally the jack for lifting up the van if I need to change a wheel is still stored in its original place right down in the corner there so this has always been removable in order for this to be removable the shelf which is sitting on it needed to be removable so I've bolted it in place with those latches and it is pretty sturdy. Obviously the shelf can't go backwards because the corner cupboard unit holds it in place it can't go over to the side behind it because that's the side of the van it can't now go forwards because it's latched to the rear cupboard unit and it can't really go sideways because those latches stop it sliding sideways as well so I'm pretty happy with that. While we're on the topic of the corner unit let me show you that. Completely remade, stained and varnished etc etc. Two drawers at the bottom. The third one looks like a drawer but isn't and then just a top little cubby for use once you're actually parked up. Notice the same latch mechanism to stop the two drawers coming open while traveling. You just um, a little bit stiff but just turn that and there is also a further little block of wood that stops each drawer coming out further than the length of the drawer just in case that thing failed. There it is just fastened to the roof of not each drawer but each drawer compartment just a little chunk of wood you cannot see it from the van and it just means the back of the drawer can't come past that point so they'll never be able to shoot out while driving. I mentioned this top one is not a drawer, it just looks like a drawer. The thing is that at this height, if you pulled it out, you wouldn't actually be able to see into it to see what was in it, so I thought a drawer is not appropriate. And then obviously I could have just had this as a, a cupboard door that hinged open that way, um, but I decided to do this. It's got upward opening hinges instead. And I'm reasonably pleased with that. They're very stiff hinges, but um, they do the job. So yeah, two drawers, which, as I say, can't come out past a certain point. And then this bottom one, I was also uh, pointing out that I was worried that it would scratch this surface. And various people said, put felt on the bottom of the drawer. The trouble was, I'd made this, much to my own surprise, to such tight tolerances to the space, there literally wasn't enough room for me to add any felt on the bottom of it. So I took the jigsaw to the whole drawer and I lopped about four millimetres off the top of it and then I raised it up by a tiny fraction, about three millimetres, so it's gone up, then there's a little bit of felt, then there's the drawer. So that means when you now pull this out, it's, it's over and above this and on this leading edge I've put felt so that as it comes out, the felt drops onto the um, worktop and therefore shouldn't scratch it as it pulls out. And again, this can't go any further open than that, so it's always not going to scratch. I'm not really sure how visible it is, but the felt is just on this front bit here, and the rest doesn't need to be felted because it's, it's lifting up, because it's been raised up by about three millimetres at the back. So there is a little tiny gap there, so the only bit that ever actually touches is this front bit, and that's the bit that has the felt on it. Other mod cons I've added include this natty little elasticated netting on the side, so I can put plates in that or whatever. And I had three of them in the pack, so I've added one down there at the front of the van, next to the electrical cabinet, and one down there as well on the end of the bed. So I can just stick random things in there. Also new in the van are these curtains between the cab area and the living area. I was previously having to fling a blanket up over the pole, which was quite the nuisance. And these, I didn't get them custom made, I just found them on Amazon. They're not quite the right size, but they're not bad. As you can see, just at the edges there, they don't quite reach, but I don't think even a wider curtain would, just because of the awkward corner shape there. I probably need to put a little extra flap on the edge just to cover that side bit but in terms of the general sealing off the cab from the living area they do a reasonable job obviously a little bit of light would escape at the top 
I could always hang a little bit of fabric down off the roof permanently just to cover that gap. But they are much better and fully black out with that lining and should keep things a little bit warmer as well. So I'm pleased with them, very pleased with them actually. So there we go, this project is pretty much done. I need to finish sanding and painting here. In fact, I need to redo this area. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. I was vaguely thinking about some sort of tiling, but I think tiling would be very heavy and would probably fall off. But some fake effect that I can stick on that wall, perhaps? Not sure. Suggestions welcome for what I should do here. But the cupboards I'm really pleased with. The end corning unit I'm really pleased with. I mean, the old one. Actually, I'll, sh I'll just remind you of how bad the old corner unit and shelf were, because they were not good. But I'm, I'm really chuffed with these. This is the old shelving unit, literally just a shelf with a little lip on the front to stop things falling out. But you couldn't really put much in it, because anything that was higher than the lip could easily fall out while you were driving. So it kind of did the job, but it was for very small, light items much better to have cupboards and the corner unit was much the same it it never came out as i intended it to be i mean it was fairly crudely made look at those lips on the shelves really with that awkward corner on them really bad and again you couldn't put anything much in this because they would just fall out as you went round a corner plus it was really hard to get in there to get anything out because of the gap it needed to be drawers so the new version is so much better I cannot begin to tell you so farewell old unit you did well but you weren't quite right there's just about one final thing I need to do which is that although the latches I've put um, stop these cupboards from opening there's nothing to stop them going inwards at the moment so when I drive that is going to rattle so I just need to put a little bit of wood to stop this being able to open inwards and then that will definitely hold it steady while I'm driving uh, so there you go, that is my update, and uh, thank you very much again, as I say, for the suggestions for the hinges and how to sort the um, drawer scratching the top of the surface. I really, I read through every single one, I really did appreciate them. Uh, what's next on the van, I don't know. At the time of filming this, we are in a full UK lockdown, you can't go anywhere, so I might sleep out in the car park in the van, just to have a night in the van. Um, that doesn't constitute going anywhere, so I think that's all right. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheerio! I've just spent an absurdly pleasing 20 minutes putting things into the cupboards and drawers, and I am ridiculously happy. I've got my cornflakes in the middle cupboard, I've got my loo roll and detergent and things in that cupboard, I've got a, uh, a draining drawer in this thing, I've got uh, my teapot and cups in this one, I've got bigger pots and pans in the bottom one. Everything has a good place, all my cutlery in that middle one as well. And, and now I've got so much extra space in the cupboard under the sink, I, I don't know what to do with it all. I'm just very chuffed, very chuffed I am. And I've just realised that one is perfect for my van slippers. So as soon as I come in the van, I can take my shoes off and put my warm slippers on. This is perfect.